I, in general, don't like the way they shoot most of the uh, stand-up specials. Like, I, it always cracks me up when they have, like, a jib camera. That's yeah. that one, like, swoops in. Like, you're swooping in on, like, <laughs> jokes. <laughs> like, I, it's just like, I don't know why you need to do that. It's stand-up comedy. It's, it's the great, this great art where it's this little thing that yeah, is yeah. going out to all these people, and they shoot it like the born identity. I, I don't <laughs> understand why. I'd like to start this video with a bit of a vent. I hate the way most stand-up specials are presented. Well, I don't hate them, I just find them boring. They're all presented the same way, it's the same camera angles, crowds, and venues. It's become completely interchangeable. The type of comedian you are has no bearing on how your special is presented. Particularly on Netflix, where every special seems to blur into a samey mush. As a result, there's a disconnect between form and content. Anyone who's seen Norm Macdonald or Nate Bargatze stand up knows they shouldn't be shot the same way as Ali Wong or Ellen DeGeneres, and yet they both are. For me, Norm Macdonald's 2011 special, Me Doing Stand Up, highlights everything wrong with how stand up is filmed. Norm Macdonald is a comedic icon. He delivers the kind of rambling, deadpan jokes that would usually be told to you by some harmless old man in a nursing home. Yet this special makes him look like he's opening for Coldplay, seriously. He's shot with these insane sweeping camera moves and flashing blue lights. His initials are plastered on the stage in capital letters. Why? It's Norm Macdonald. His comedy works best in these small, intimate venues. If I were filming him, I'd put him in a tiny room that captures the strange hysteria he is able to create. Not put him on a stage where it looks like he's about to dive into the audience. As my buddy says, uh, the worst part about Cosby was he was a hypocrite. And I said, I don't think that was the worst part. <laughs> Specials like these show a general lack of awareness comedians have when it comes to how their specials should look and feel, which is a shame because this has a huge effect on how we interpret their material. Now, there are a stack of comedians who understand how their specials should be presented, but generally speaking, it's the same looking thing, over and over and over again. With this in mind, it's worth exploring how a comedian can play with how stand-up is presented, which brings us to Jared Carmichael's 8. This special, directed by world's gangliest genius Bo Burnham, has been thought through. The structure, pace, and cinematography are all perfectly in tone with the material. And although Carmichael doesn't reach the game-breaking heights he did when he directed Drew Michael's 2018 special, it's a great blueprint for how comedians should think think about their specials moving forward. But what makes this special so mouth-wateringly good? Well, stand-up specials have pretty much looked the same for the past 40 years. When Richard Pryor released Live in Concert in 1979, he pretty much defined the modern comedy special. The comedian comes onto a front-facing stage above the audience. They tell their jokes using a variety of close-ups and wide shots, with a few shots of the audience thrown in for a bit of atmosphere. They finish on their biggest joke, the crowd gives a standing ovation, and they all go home. To be honest, Pryor kind of nailed it, and there has been barely any innovation since. You can see this in the way most comedy specials begin. Comedy specials start in one of two ways. One is of the comedian walking on stage. <laughs> I know, thrilling. The other is a kind of pre-show thing. This will usually consist of footage of the comedian walking to the venue, getting ready to perform, looking at their notes. Oh, sorry, I was about to fall asleep. Pariah did it first, and it's been copied by every comedian in the history of time and space since. The other is a weird opening segment where the comedian says or does something completely random for no reason. Norm Macdonald wears a cowboy hat, Catherine Ryan animates her life, Dave Chappelle stares meditatively into the distance while Morgan Freeman narrates his thoughts. He's in the trance. Liza Schlesinger takes a giant ship. Guys, I'm about to take a giant ship. Yet none of these segments have any real connection to the material. And even though there are some brilliant intro sequences out there, Rory Scovel being an absolute diva 
Weaver and Stephen Wright being a surrealist wizard come to mind. Most of them feel like total filler you can skip through to get to the start of the show. Carmichael's special is a bit different. It starts with two shots. One is a slow, rotating zoom up a grandiose staircase that shows Title VIII at its center. The other, a tracking shot down a long hallway that eventually turns to find Carmichael alone in the dark on his phone. Unlike other specials, both these shots flow perfectly into Carmichael's stand-up. They're slow and quiet. The repetitious beat of the music, hypnotic. The image of Carmichael alone with his phone and thoughts is a perfect symbol for the special as a whole. From these two shots, the camera cuts to a close-up of Carmichael's face. I'd like to say how unconventional this is. As viewers, we forget how much we're used to seeing the comedian come on stage. We're so used to it that we don't realize how boring it is, and that there are more interesting ways to introduce a comedian than have them bask in the audience's applause for a minute and a half like they've just won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Seriously, do you have brain damage? When the camera cuts to Carmichael's face, we're thrown off guard. Gone is the hype and spectacle. Instead, it's just Carmichael, searching for his next words in the silence, before asking, Oh, are we gonna be okay? It's such an intense, intimate moment that sets the tone for the rest of the special. Each shot is slow. The camera pans around Carmichael in uncompromising extended takes. Where most specials are constantly cutting between shots like an eight-year-old on a hell-bent sugar rush, Carmichael often tells an entire joke without the camera cutting at all. In fact, in the same number of shots Michael McIntyre uses to get through 10 seconds of footage, Carmichael gets through over two minutes. And where other specials intercut their jokes with an ethnically diverse bunch of audience members laughing along so you remember it's funny, Carmichael provides no relief. In fact, the only cutaway to an audience member is when Carmichael talks to them directly. If his grandma were alive, you would be a secret. <laughs> right? A hundred percent. It's a lot of fucking work, right? This unblinking cinematography not only suits his slow, deliberate delivery, but also creates tension. Carmichael explores some dark topics, and the way the camera holds on him makes it feel like he's challenging us to engage, or else turn away. Mommy, who's that on the Frosted Flakes box? <laughs> That's no longer our concern, son. This is heightened by Carmichael's surroundings. His relaxed body language and scruffy attire are in constant opposition, both with the venue and the audience itself. The venue looks like it'd be more suited to some cultish initiation ceremony. And now, the final ordeal, the paddling of the swollen ass with paddles. And I don't know if the audience was told to do this, but their suit and ties make for an amusing contrast. Carmichael in Timberlands and a denim jacket, talking to an audience who look like they're attending a wedding. Carmichael even mentions this a couple times in passing. You could talk, you guys, wear them. <laughs> I know you got on suits and shit, and it <laughs> feel, I hope you feel comfortable. None of you are gonna laugh at it. Because you're good people, I could feel it. You wore suits. Where most comedians find common ground with the audience, Carmichael targets differences, creating a slightly charged atmosphere. Which is kind of the point. It's really worth talking about how this special was filmed. Reactions to the initial taping of the special were mixed, to say the least. There were numerous negative reviews. Columnist Jeffrey Gurian called it one of the strangest, most unusual performances I've ever seen, especially for something being taped for TV. Noting prolonged periods of silence and Carmichael's slow, laboured delivery. Cracker Boy was sorely disappointed. If you've seen the special, this will sound odd, because this is one of the most polished specials I've ever seen. I mean, oh my god, this is polished. This is like 40 karat gold diamond polish. This is slick. Vincent. 
We happy? Yeah, we happy. If I had to guess, I'd say Carmichael didn't care too much about what the audience thought. Sure, he wanted the jokes to land in the right places, but he was more concerned about getting the material right for the viewer at home. You can see this in the final special. There are moments when Carmichael ignores the audience entirely, instead delivering a punchline directly down the camera lens. You would think a teacher once told me, nigga, you'll never have cereal. <laughs> Gurian noted how Carmichael took at least three lengthy bits and repeated them verbatim throughout the taping, and at one point even said, I want to make sure I choose my words carefully, as if he was answering to a lawyer in court. Maybe he was genuinely unprepared, but considering again how heckin' slick the final product looks, I think Carmichael wanted something that came together as a piece of film even if he lost the audience in the process. In fact, the tension of an audience unsure what Carmichael is doing only adds to the atmosphere. It's a completely new method of recording stand-up, and I am all for it, even if it disappoints audience members like Crackerboy, who as I said was absolutely livid. So where does that leave us? Well said. Well, just as the first and last shots of the special are intended to mirror one another, Carmichael gives us the impression of something unending. The struggles in Carmichael's head have no resolution, so he doesn't give the audience one either. It's telling that the last words of Carmichael's special are not. Alright, I've been Ali Wong, have a good night everybody, thank you! but instead... What else should we talk about? How Carmichael's special is filmed is meant to challenge the audience as much as the material itself. It's uncompromising and occasionally uncomfortable. But isn't that exactly what you want from good comedy? It's a rare example of form and content being in total alignment. It's been shot in a way to enhance Carmichael's strengths and emphasize his perspective. Wouldn't it be nice if other comedians did the same? With comedy, I, I, um, I don't know, I feel like it should be presented in uh, more unique ways. I think we've kind of found like the same way to capture it and we've kind of repeated that since like the 70s like right yeah live performance and like I, I just felt like there were more interesting ways to to capture someone's thoughts 